Dear students, in this module, we are going to look at the types of mass spectrometry based proteomics. Proteins can simply be sequenced by using Edmund degradation. You may not know the protein that is there in a sample and therefore you can proceed with the Edmund degradation and arrive at the sequence. But the Edmund degradation has a shortcoming. It cannot sequence very large protein and therefore uh, you can use mass spectrometry based proteomics. It can solve this problem for very large proteins as well. Moreover, you can do you can do this process very quickly, which in case of Edmund degradation takes a very long time. So let's take a look at the steps that are involved in MS based proteomics first. The first thing that you have to do is to separate proteins from a sample. So once you have separated the proteins, then you need to ionize them. This involves addition of a charge onto the protein so that it can be deflected in the mass spectrometer uh, flux, the magnetic flux. If the protein does not carry a charge, it will not be deflected by the magnetic field in the mass spectrometer. Next, once the protein is charged, and left in the magnetic field, the motion it has will be deflected in a certain way and we have to measure these deflections. These deflections are proportional to the mass of the protein and therefore you can analyze the mass. Once you have measured the mass, then you have to detect the mass, the particle and therefore the process is complete. There are two methodologies. This is the, these steps that I just mentioned are the general steps. However, there are some specific things that you can do within each step in order to better identify the proteins. The first approach towards MS-based proteomics is the bottom-up approach. In the bottom-up ap approach, the peptides resulting from the protein are measured for their mass. And these masses are then used for searching protein databases. So as a first step, you have to digest the protein using an enzyme. So you have to cleave the protein at some specific sites and the resultant peptides can therefore be processed for protein search. The second approach that I want to talk about today is the top-down proteomics approach. In top-down proteomics approach, which is a more modern approach, Whole proteins are first measured for their molecular weight. So once you have measured the molecular weight of a protein, then it is fragmented into its peptide, not using an enzyme because the protein is already in the chamber of the mass spectrometer and you cannot treat it with an enzyme there. So therefore, there are other strategies which you can use to fragment the protein and there are lots of them. So once you have measured the mass of the whole protein, fragmented it, then you can measure the molecular weight of the fragments as well. Let's talk a bit in detail about the bottom-up proteomics. The protein complex is first treated with site-specific enzyme. So if you have multiple proteins within a sample and you treat it with an enzyme, then the enzyme is going to cut all the proteins at the site on which it binds. This will result in lots of peptides from different proteins, but having been cut at the same residue. So this is the first point about bottom-up proteomics. Next, these peptides are measured for their mass. And for that, you have to select one peptide at a time. So once you select one peptide out of these many peptides, you can detect its deflection in the motion and you can record the mass. Of course, you can repeat this process to measure the mass of all the peptides that are there in the sample. Now, once you have got all the peptide masses, then you can refer to the protein sequence database. You can create peptides out of those proteins that are there in the protein sequence database using in silico digestion. And then you can compare these masses. So the more matches you have, the higher is the probability that the peptide 
the protein you're looking at is actually the protein that is being uh, reported in the protein sequence database. Now, a bit about top-down proteomics. In top-down proteomics, what you do is, of course, you ionize the protein, so it carries a charge and hence can move in the magnetic field, so you can measure its molecular weight. Once you measure the molecular weight of the whole protein, then you can actually go into the protein sequence database and find out those proteins that have the exact same mass. However, an important thing to note here is that the proteins in your sample may be carrying post-translational modifications or chemical modifications. So in that case, their original mass will be different than the mass that is being reported by the mass spectrometer. However, for the sake of simplicity, let's assume that their mass is the same as the unmodified protein's mass. So if you can compare the protein from the database, you can arrive at a good guess for the protein identity. Next, the protein is selected from the MALU. Of course, there can be multiple proteins in the sample. So you just mass select a specific protein and then you fragment it using some protein fragmentation technique. So once you fragment the protein, there will be multiple peptides again. Remember, this is different from bottom-up proteomics because in bottom-up proteomics, you were fragmenting the protein using enzymes. But in this case, you are not using enzymatic digestion. Rather, you are using some other sophisticated methods that we'll talk about later. Okay, so once you have measured the mass of the top-down proteomics peptides, you can do the same as you did in bottom-up proteomics. That is, compare the peptide mass with the in silico digested masses from the protein sequence database. So, in conclusion, there are two major methods for MS-based proteomics. First one is the bottom-up proteomics, in which peptides are produced by enzymatic digestion of the proteins and then measured, while in the second method, we have the top-down approach in which whole proteins are first analyzed, analyzed for their mass, followed by their fragmentation and onward peptide mass measurements.